Hi you guys. Yesterday I got several switches in the post. See, apart from keyboards, I also collect keyboard switches, so thanks again guys. And one was a stock of old Alps SKFF switches. These switches are very rare, they've only been found on one model of Canon typewriter so far, but they were pretty cool and quite old, designed by Alps Electric. Now a while ago I did a review on an IBM P70 with Alps plate spring switches in it. Click the link to check that one out, and I found these to be really good and really interesting switches. Since I did that video I got donated a loose switch of those as well, so I can show you now how this works. Basically, there's this framed plate spring, which inverts if you apply enough pressure to it. And the pressure is applied by the slider, which has a pusher in it, which is on an integrated coil spring like this. Now, when the plate spring shoots down, it generates tactility and a clicky noise, and it presses down on this switch plate that's laying down inside the switch, which is pretty much the same style of switch plates, though slightly different as those found in normal ALP switches. These SKFF switches use a supposedly older vertical plate spring instead, but they're a much more elaborate and interesting design. At the heart of the switch there's still a framed plate spring, but at the back is a little plastic lever here with a little pip on it. The coil spring is extremely short by the way, now this lever thing pivots around an axis embedded at the back and the lever also has two hands on it which grip the plate spring so that when you press the lever it pulls the plate spring inward like this. Now quite a few parts are actually molded into the plastic but because I was sent multiple I decided I could sacrifice one for scientific purposes to show you exactly how it works. Now what you might be expecting is that just like with Alps plate spring switches, the plate spring just pushes down and that presses a foil connected to one of the terminals through a spacer onto the other terminal, like with complicated Alps. But that's not the case, it's actually much more efficient and intriguing than that. You see on the front below this plastic stuff there are two T-shaped contact terminals, one of which has a slab that reaches almost to the other terminal but they don't touch. And on the other side, that slab has a contact cross point, as does the back of the plate spring. So when the plate spring inverts, the cross point on the plate spring meets that on one contact terminal. And as the other contact terminal has a spike that goes through the plate spring, which holds it onto the switch plate, the switch plate is electrically connected to the smaller terminal. So when the cross points meet, the current goes from one terminal through the plate spring to the other. No spaces or anything needed, just this neat pre-packaged and actually quite sturdy switch plate construction. Brilliant stuff. So all in all, the switch has 10 parts and it's actually a really nice design. Well, that's it for this Switch Teardown. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.